Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to another episode of the Fiqh of Love. And subhanallah, we're already into the third episode of this great series of the Fiqh of Love. And we'd like to welcome back our Sheikh, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Yeah, jazakallah khair. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Mashallah, so far it's been a very exciting beginning to this series. We've, we've Love is always exciting. Yeah. I love you for the sake of Allah. <laughs> <laughs> and subhanallah, you know, on the last episode, mashallah, you gave some great examples, practical examples from the stories of the prophets. You mentioned you know, and all the prophets. Uh, where you mentioned the story of Musa alayhi salam, you know, the way he found love, you know, and, and began his journey through marriage. Also, you mentioned some of the lustful haram types of love, mm -hmm. you know, and you gave some practical examples within the Quran, the way the woman tried to impose herself on Yusuf alayhi salam. SubhanAllah, you know, going back to the Quran and the Sunnah for this guidance really you know, gives us that sense of that, that, you know, it really does open our eyes to the correct way of doing things. You know, in this day and age, we're living in a time where there's lots of different deans, uh, different ways of life. You know, they, they have different religions, the, the secular way, way of life, Hollywood and Bollywood. And many people are taking their, their guidance from other sources. Correct. You know, and especially when we're looking at Hollywood and Bollywood, and Nollywood and all these different types of uh, film industries where they have this haram type of love you know and a lot of the time people are expecting something that doesn't actually exist you and, know and, and even though they own that this is, this is all acting yes and those celebrities themselves the actors and actresses they never last in, in a marriage life for a few months yeah. They keep getting married and they keep divorcing each mm. other all the time. So they don't, they don't actually find this uh, uh, sakina mm. or uh, uh, tranquility and comfort mm. in any of their marriages. So uh, the person should be wise enough to understand that you should not compare yourself to what you see on the screen. This is all acting. SubhanAllah Shaykh, you mentioned the different types of love. You are mentioning the difference between love and lust you know, the haram and the halal type of love. What effects can this, this have on the individual? Well, there is actually a hadith that answers your question uh, straight to the point in which the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, uh, which means when you love something too much, when you're obsessed with love, with the love of anything, uh, in our uh, case here, we're talking about uh, a love between a couple. Uh, that leads to blindness and deafness. In what sense? A person may fall in love with a woman for innocence because she is so beautiful. That happens mm -hmm. from his point of view. So as a result, he ignores all the other facts. He ignores that she is not wearing hijab. In the future, she will. You know, I'm going to convince her. Uh, she smokes. Yeah, I'm going to convince her to quit smoking. Uh, she falls in love with a guy for whatever reason, but the guy doesn't pray. You know, Daddy, I'm going to make him pray. I'm going, he's working in haram. He's earning from riba. Well, in the future, inshallah, once we get together, I'm going to influence him to quit the haram and look for the halal. Mm. This is exactly the interpretation of the hadith, يُعْمِي وَيُصِمْ To the extent that when some people say, you know what, uh, I know the girl whom you love, she has a terrible background, and she comes from a terrible family, etc., etc. So the person pretends like he doesn't see anything wrong with her, he doesn't hear, nor does he want to see or hear anything about her that may affect his decision. Hmm. This is very dangerous because love alone shouldn't be the only component um, based on you make the final decision of marrying that person. SubhanAllah. So, you know, you, you're saying that even, you know, some people may even get married to someone 
even if they don't pray? What would they do in this situation? Should they just not get married? I, I happened to uh, attend uh, one wedding where uh, a guy who was coming from a very practicing Muslim family fell in love with, uh, with a non-Muslim woman, a non-Muslim girl. He got to know her online. And as a result, he said, Sheikh, uh, I want to marry her. The Quran says it's okay to marry from the people of the book. And she's Christian. And um, no matter what you tell him, he said, you, you see, I'm I going to marry her. And she will become Muslim and she will become a good girl, etc. Mm -hmm. And when she came, I figured that uh, something haram may happen. So I said, mm -hmm. okay, we'll get you married. And uh, then they got married. In one week, he called me and he said, Sheikh, I divorced her. I said, why? Subhanallah, a few days ago, if anyone were to see you, like you're obsessed with her love, like you would die if you don't marry her. It would be the end of the world if you don't marry her. He said, true. But, Sheikh, I ended up buying alcohol for her on a daily basis. I used to go and buy alcohol for her. You know, because I loved her. So I just realized that I'm going down hell and I will be, I will lose my deen. Mm. This is just a simple example. There are many, mm. many examples to that. Sometimes a respected, pious, righteous person loving to his family, to his parents, to his siblings, then he marries a woman who is kind of selfish. She wants him all for herself. Mm. Then she keeps bombarding him, ending up making him hate his family. Uh, being undutiful to his parents, literally make him boycott his siblings, not to talk to any family member. She wants him all entirely for herself. A man should be wise enough not to let this happen. Yes, I hmm. love you, but I love my parents more. And hey, we're not making a contrast or a hmm. comparison between loving your spouse and loving your parents. There's, these are two different categories, but no one should affect the other. Understand? So uh, understanding that loving your spouse mm. should not lead to severing the ties of your kinship, particularly your parents and your siblings, is very important. Like you're saying, it's your, not just your duties as a husband, but to your religion as well. You know, to your family, your community, of course, of course. your own uh, you know, religion, your own worship absolutely, to Allah. Absolutely, absolutely. Of course. SubhanAllah, this is a... So, so Sheikh, for those, for instance, who are, you know, they don't necessarily have love, okay? That maybe their family have uh, introduced them to uh, a sister. He's happy with what he sees. They get married, but he, they're a bit worried, you know, because they've been raised with the Hollywood and Nollywood thinking that they should be love. So how do they now develop the love after marriage? Well, through my experience as a marriage counselor, I figured that, subhanAllah, the kind of marriage which uh, was based on that I married this girl or I picked up the guy or I accepted this proposal, uh, somebody introduced them to me or uh, families introduced, uh, you know, the uh, mates to each other. They didn't know each other before. They didn't have love affair. Mm. Uh, uh, such marriages are most likely to last than the marriages which are based on love and love relationship before uh, marriage. And this is among Muslims and non-Muslims are alike. Mm -hmm. um, I think I shared with you the study which was done by the uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Saul Jordan, mm -hmm. the French uh, sociologist, uh, who came up with the uh, results that 85% of marriages which were uh, previously established or based on uh, uh, love uh, they end up with uh, divorce because of the same fact mm. that, that the Prophet said you are me when some blinds you don't see a lot of things mm. even though they're very obvious but mm. you are pretending that you don't see them you hear a lot of things but you're acting like you know you never heard of them why because you focus on one thing I want her mm. or she says I want him no mm. matter what you say mm. no matter what the whole world says about him but you know, uh, y you know, in, in Islam, marriage isn't only marrying an individual. It's a merge of two families into mm. each other. Mm. So when you marry, you should keep in mind not only who's the girl or who's the guy, but also the siblings, the mm. family. 
because one day your kids when you have kids will say to somebody uncle so who's going to be your kids mm. uncle Paterna or materna who's going to be your kids uncle Simple. is he a drug dealer is he an atheist mm. is she a prostitute mm. uh, is he somebody whom you're not happy to have in the family and would most definitely have a bad influence on you and your family many people mm. come to me and say I ask my wife not to speak to her family. I say, why? Haram. And say, you don't know, Sheikh, because they have a, such a bad influence on my kids. Mm. Uh, they make them eat this. They make them watch that. And they, they're famous of child molestation. Well, you didn't know all of that before marriage. Mm. Well, unfortunately, I knew. Mm. I heard of, but I was blind. I hear that a lot. I was blind. I was mm. deaf. So that's exactly what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. حبك شيء يعمي well, mm. some many girls, when the parents or the family friends introduce a suitor mm. right away without even considering meeting the guy, checking mm. him out, uh, talking to him, perhaps maybe there's some sort of chemistry, maybe you like him. Mm. No means no. Why? Because he is proposed to her by the parents, mm. by the family or the family friends. She wants to find the guy on her own. She wants to find mm. her love on her own. This is not how it goes. Yeah, subhanAllah. I mean, I know stories of, of sisters, 40, 50 years old, unmarried, never been married, you know, because they they think that this love is going to come. Yeah. You know, subhanAllah. F first of all, we, tragic. we invoke Allah and we ask Him mm. to make it easy for all the single men and women to get mm. married. I mean. Whether they have been previously married, then divorced or widowed, or uh, they never been married before. But here, we're not picking on anyone. Mm. We're not casting the blame on people. It's because of you. You turn down many proposals. You're waiting for Mr. Right. No, we're not talking about that. Mm. But we are trying to open up their minds mm. and uh, make the viewers pay more attention to the facts behind the true love and mm. behind marriage and the major purpose and object of that. Mm. Uh, a person is trying to achieve when he or she get married it is not only about love which mm. is due to I like him and he likes me mm. he's cool she's nice he cares about me uh, she's very sweet all of that is mm. good but this is not the main pole mm. which would form a family I think it's also kind of a, a reflection of your own uh, closest closeness to Allah you know, if you're close to Allah, if you're, you know, worshipping well, as we, as we should say, you know, you're going to be looking for something different in a wife. You know, you're going to be looking for someone who's, you know, practicing Islam well, you know, you from, need a, from help a good family. Hand. Exactly. You need somebody to help yeah. you to enter paradise. Mm. You know, talking about love. Uh, once the Prophet Sallallahu was sitting with his companions, he said, Al-mar'atu li akhri azwajiha fil jannah. The hadith means, like he was asked, <coughs> if a woman got married to uh, a man and the man was righteous, but he died, then she got married to another man or a third man. The first husband or the first and the second husband, they passed away. And the third is a righteous man as well. So all her husbands and ex-husbands were nice and righteous. Now she's a righteous woman too, and they all entered Al Jannah. Who would be her husband in paradise? Mm. Is it the first husband or the second husband? The Prophet said that she will be married in heaven in Al Jannah to the man whom she was his wife last. Mm. When she died, she was married to this person. Both of them are righteous. They ended up in Al-Jannah. She will be his wife in Al-Jannah. Even though she loved her ex-husband so much, but, you know, she married somebody else. Okay? So when the Sahaba heard that, they started thinking about it. Abu Darda, may Allah be pleased with him, and his wife discussed this matter. <laughs> and she said, you know, Abu Darda, if you happen to die before me, I will never ever marry another guy after you why not because i want to be your wife in paradise subhanallah beautiful. heaven will not be heaven without you subhanallah Sheikh, that's so beautiful. he died before her yeah 
and she lived the rest of her life without getting married again, even though she received such precious proposals. SubhanAllah. One of those proposals was by Amir al-Mu'mineen, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. And she turned him and she says, you know, an offer like that should not be rejected, but I promise my uh, husband to be his wife in heaven. SubhanAllah, this is a type of wife, inshallah. <laughs> May Allah grant, grant all the Muslim this, men in the world. This is an example of the true love. It's beautiful, subhanAllah. Yeah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We're just going to take a short break okay. and we'll be back. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum. the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked him about the best act of worship, the best of deeds, the best of sayings, the best of people, or even the best of places. The purpose was to compete with each other in order to achieve the highest place in paradise through achieving the best of deeds. The idea of our program revolves around discussing and explaining only sound a hadith in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has guided us to the best of acts of worship or who will be the best of people. Stay tuned daily to watch our program, Best of the Best. Assalamu alaikum salam. Welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh, just before the break, we was he was giving some nice examples, subhanAllah, of the priorities, really some of the priorities that we need to have when searching for a wife. You know, we shouldn't be too driven driven by our desires. That doesn't stop us from, you know, looking at uh, a prospect wife or a prospect husband, etc. But at the same time, you know, what are we looking for in marriage? You know, what should we be looking for? You know, Allah mentions, and maybe you can elaborate on this. Uh, you know, there's some du'as which Allah mentions in the Quran, uh, in order for us to seek uh, some of the Correct. some of these. Uh, well, uh, perhaps you're referring to the supplication of the servants of the most beneficent and merciful, uh, Ibad al-Rahman. By the end of Surah Al Furqan, chapter number uh, 25. Yeah. Uh, among their qualities, that their constant dua, which they invoke Allah on a regular basis, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata a'yunin waj'anna lil muttaqina imama. So the dua means they say, Our Lord grant us from our spouses. And we said before, as wajah refers to both the husbands and the wives. Mm. It's singular, is dawj. Qurrata'a So grant us from our spouses and our zuriyat of spring, children, boys and girls. Qurrata'a'yun, comfort for our eyes. Waj'anna lil muttaqina imam. And that is the thing that you need to look for most when you mm. get married. So no matter how much you are attracted to that individual. Think about one thing. Would you really achieve this comfort, peace of mind when you marry this person? Uh, would marrying this person end up giving you a goodly of spring which will make you the happiest? Mm. And when we say the happiest and having peace of mind and comfort for your eyes, it is not the temporary one like Uli here. Mm. You know, what happens when a person marries uh, a non-Muslim woman, for instance? He says, Allah says you can marry a kitabiyah, a Christian. Mm. So he's always worried, what if I die today? I have three kids. He's always worried that I have three kids. If I don't have kids, I would have divorced her a long time ago. Why? Because she dances, because she drinks, and I cannot stop her. Because she goes to the church and such, and, and she insists on taking the kids with her. And when they go to uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve, the kids say, Daddy, we have to go with mom. So, you know, he says, I, it's very painful for me, mm -hmm. but, you know, I cannot say no. 
if mm. I say no and we break up, if I divorce her, I would lose my kids. Mm. Yes, indeed, you would lose them. And guess what? You've lost them already the mm. day you decided mm. to make the decision. Subhanallah. You know, in Arabic, there is a very nice uh, statement. They say, In English, they say, if you don't learn the easy way, you're going to learn the hard way. So, before getting married, there's something called istishara, mashura, consulting mm. people, the elders, the experts, the scholars, and uh, then istikhara, uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you the right choice, to give you the right choice. Mm. So when you ask people who have an experience, whether because they counsel many marriages, mm. or elders, they know better than you, or people who have been in the field before you, they may give you the advice by saying, you not me, I'm different. Mm. Inshallah, I'm going to make her the best person <laughs> on earth. And subhanAllah, mm. in, uh, a couple of years ago in, uh, in Hajj, I met a couple. And the sister said that, you know, I only accepted Islam this year. We've been married for 30 years. For 30 years. And I only accepted Islam this year. So, you keep trying for so many years. Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala knows whether it will work or not. Mm. And then you're worried about the fate of your children. Yeah. I meet the girl when I was teaching at the university in the States. She introduces herself to me and she said her name is, it's a, it's a, it's a Muslim name. I don't want to mm. say the name. Then obviously, out of curiosity, I asked her, I said, you know, that sounds like an Arabic and a Muslim name. She says, yes, because my father is Muslim. Mm. And my mother is Christian. I mm. said, okay. And then I, uh, you know, I got to know that they are separated. And she told me that she followed, uh, she went with her mother and she followed her mother's faith or so whatever. Allah. How do you feel about it as mm. a Muslim? And if, uh, you know, if you, if you Shaykh, enter the time machine and it takes you back, would you still uh, make the same decision? Would you still fall in love and say, mm. but I love her? You know, I'm, I'm not saying the person mm. is bad. She's good, but for yeah. somebody else. You know, this is, this is so common, uh, especially in many parts of Africa as well. Um, you find mixed families, you know, where one of the parents, not necessarily the man. Sometimes it's even the, the woman is a Muslim. Yeah. And, and, the, and the husband is a Christian. You know, and this, of course, this is haram. But you find this is very common in, in certain parts of the world. I have a case today where a woman... And she's a doctor. She got married to another doctor, even though many people uh, reminded her that the Quran says no. Mm. And it's not permissible in any mm. sect, in any madhab. You know, this yeah. is yeah. what Allah said. She said, you guys have to be open-minded and I'm going to make him mm. Muslim, etc. <coughs> then after several years of torture, she decided to go through divorce and it was a turmoil. And she is saying that, I ended up eating pork. I ended up drinking with them in the parties in mm. order to please his family and to mingle with the family mm. and make them feel like mm. I'm not a stranger. Mm. But no matter what I tried, I always looked like stranger. So I'm Muslim, you know. So the, you know, this is as I mentioned in in Africa they call it Christmas. Yeah, because they they have they they say they're half Christian, half Muslim. Yeah. Of course, we know from from a religious perspective, this is it can't exist. You know, you're either Christian or, you, or you're if Muslim. If you're looking for this sakina, for the peace of mind, mm. the Prophet wasallam said, nothing a believer can earn and benefit after accepting faith and becoming righteous than having a good spouse. Mm. And in this case, he said a good wife. Mm. So when he sees her, she pleases him. She's mm. nice looking, okay? Not necessarily a beauty queen, but mm. she's beautiful. Okay, she mm. pleases him. And uh, if he travels away, she guards his family, his wealth, his children, and she guards her own chastity. Mm. She's a modest woman. She's not a woman who is mm. outgoing to the extent that she has friends, and he's always worried, what is she doing, whom is she with, and mm. so on. Okay? Yeah. So such woman is the biggest gain. Also, likewise, how many times people call, sisters call and say that, you know, I'm, I'm looking for divorce or khola because my husband does, my husband watches porn. My husband has mm. outside marriage relationship. My husband 
is never satisfied with me. He's always looking for haram. Mm. And the thing is, she knew beforehand he is like that. But mm. she was hoping that he will change. She says, mm. I'm sorry. I fought the whole world. I even boycott my own parents. I married without the consent of my guardian. So, uh, I disobeyed my father. I disconnected my family from my family for him. Mm. But he turned me down. And he's treating me like, uh, like a trash. Mm. I hear that all the time. So Habibi, so he, he Habibi went it's lies. not only yeah. what you see. It mm. is not only mm. what your heart feels. Mm. Wh whatever you are attracted to, the look, mm. uh, the company, the conversation, and going out, and you feel like you're living a love story. There are a lot of major mm. factors that you got to keep in mind mm. before making the decision. Mm. A lot of girls email me, call me, and send questions to ask her that, you know, is it halal to marry a Shia guy? Fact number one, we do not generalize when we say Shia. Mm. You know, we don't say they are all such and such. But I just want to ask you one question. When you know that somebody who would be cursing your mother on daily basis, you know that beforehand, he hates mm. your mother so much mm. and you still marry him and you're hoping that he will take you to your mother and connect with her, mm. it's not going to happen. When you know that somebody who curses Aisha radiallahu anha, mm. Hafsa radiallahu anha, and their fathers, mm. and most of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and you're still hoping that I'm going to change him, I'm going to make him uh, a Sunni, I'm going to make him, he can marry a girl mm. of his uh, type. And you marry not just a Sunni Muslim boy, but a righteous person, mm. a righteous uh, husband, mm. a righteous father, mm. so that, you know, in case that your Iman mm. uh, goes low, he helps you out to increase the level of your Iman. And the husband likewise, when he marries a woman who is righteous and belonging to a righteous family, she will definitely help him out to improve as well. Mm. You know, Allah describes them as garments in the Quran. You know, he says they are the... I love this ayah. Subhanallah. You know, this is libas. Mm. And my, uh, the undershirt is libas. Mm. The closest thing to your body is your undergarment. Mm. It's called libas. Mm. You know how this is explained? The Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith, احفظ عورتك إلا من زوجتك. And you should not show your aura to anyone. What mm. is your aura? The aura for a man between mm. the navel to the knees. Mm. Okay? You're not supposed to show it to no one. Even when you're sitting before your dad, mm. not only your mom and your mm. sister, your siblings, your parents, cover up your aura. Mm. But before your wife, mm. you and her are only one mm. thing. هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ they are your garments, and you are to them their garments. Mm. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ warned severely against after becoming like garments. By the way, the ayah doesn't say like. Rather, it says they are your mm. garments, mm. are actually your garments, mm. your cover-up. Yeah. You know, they conceal your faults, your drawbacks, your shortcomings. They protect you. Exactly. Subhanallah. So whatever happens, mm. whatever goes on behind closed doors is not supposed to be revealed to no one. Inshallah. Not even to your siblings, not even to your friends when you're having coffee together, watching a movie, your mm. close friends. You don't say, last night yeah. me and wife did this and this and this and this. And last night we tried a new sexual position. Yeah. This is absolutely yes, haram. It's a major sin. Mm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was warning once the companions against such mm. behavior. Uh, I said, be careful. I hope you're not doing so. So somebody said, oh, yes, they do, men and women. Mm. So the Prophet wasallam said, oh, that's such like a Satan, male and female Satans. Mm. They met across the street and they have sexual relations in front of everyone. Mm. You know, you become like shaitan. Yeah. And you expose yourself and you expose your spouse. Nope. Subhanallah. That is this absolutely is. forbidden. You know, like somebody who, who displays their underwear. Yeah. Subhanallah. Before people. No one. 
No one who's wise and nice and modest. So no one should should share anything that goes on in the privacy of their bedroom while sharing bed with anyone else. With anyone else. Sheikh, I'm sorry to cut you there, subhanAllah. Very uh, informative points, subhanAllah, very important points we've been through today. Um, thanks for joining us again. You're most welcome. And uh, inshallah, next episode we'll pick up where we left off and carry on. So make sure you join us next time for another episode of the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.